First, you need to know about blood pressure. Blood pressure is controlled by the components of the cardiovascular system, which is made up of your heart and blood vessels. But what does it have to do with me? You need oxygen to live. Blood carries oxygen to your cells via the cardiovascular system. But blood doesn't just flow. It needs to be pushed. This is done by the heart. I don't really understand. Can you explain it another way? Sure thing, tough. You can think of the cardiovascular system and blood pressure like the journey of hundreds of waka around New Zealand. New Zealand is the body and the waka serve two purposes. One, to go from a central tribe, your heart, to supply all other tribes around the country with sustenance. Two, to dispose of all the tribe's waste. These tribes need food to function properly and in exchange for the food they are given, the tribe gives its waste back to the waka to take back to a central tribe. The blood cells of the water and the waka carry food slash oxygen to different tribes which represent tissues and cells in our body. The blood vessels are the awa or moana that carry the water and waka to the tribes they must supply. Blood pressure is the current of the moana and awa, pushing the water and the waka to the different places. The waka are controlled by the central tribe, our hearts. If there is a problem with the central tribe, then there will be a problem with all the waka. So my heart is the problem? Sort of. Your heart is made up of cardiac muscle. These muscles contract to push blood to different areas of the body. So these muscles are kind of like the structure of the central tribe producing the force and direction to start the waka on their journey and to push them to where they need to be. Some blood go to the lungs, which are closer to your heart, and some blood travel further to places like your toes. If you can imagine, that's like waka travelling from Waikato all the way to Stewart Island. Stewart Island? Yes, Stewart Island. But how? How does it get there? That's so far away! To ensure that all the tribes are getting enough sustenance and waste removal, the water and waka make the same journey around the country in the most efficient way possible. They travel through a system in the central tribe first in order to gain enough force to move to different places. Okay, but how does the central tribe move the waka? The heart or the central tribe in this analogy, is split into two regions. The region that deals with removing waste from the waka and the region that deals with supplying the oxygenated waka to the tribes or the tissues and cells around the body. These two regions don't interact with each other directly. They're just next to each other in the heart. They're called the left and the right. Let's start with the region of the central tribe that deals with the waste. This is the right side of the heart and it deals with deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood travels into the heart from the body through veins called the vena cava, the superior on top and the inferior on the bottom, both flowing into the right atrium. The thing about blood is that it moves from a high to low pressure gradient. As you can see, the deoxygenated blood begins to fill the right atrium. This is where the waka are returning to the central tribe, the heart, carrying the waste carbon dioxide, that they have picked up from different tribes around the country. So different cells and tissues around the body. This is where the blood passively passes through a valve to the right ventricle, a leg. This leg has valves, or gates, on both sides, one to let the waka in and one to let the waka out. As the blood volume decreases in the atrium, the atrial muscles begin to contract which increases blood pressure and forces the rest of the blood to the right ventricle. As the ventricle is filling and no more waka can fit in the leg, it begins to contract. This tries to push the blood back to the atrium, but instead it forces the inlet valve shut. At this stage, both gates are closed and contraction is taking place, creating immense high pressure. The muscle contraction creates swelling, making the area of the leg smaller, causing high pressure, getting ready to force the waka out where it needs to go when the gates open. Waste has not been removed yet, as this phase is just pressure. Due to so much pressure building up, the outlet valve, exit gate, is forced open. The waka are pushed through the pulmonary trunk, to the pulmonary artery, to the lungs at high pressure caused by a strong current in the hour leaving. As more blood leaves the ventricle, the outlet valve closes due to the lack of pressure. 
the pulmonary artery is acting as an awa that works to move the waka from the central tribe to the lung tribe to pick up oxygen for the other tribes. The deoxygenated blood forces its way to the lungs to become oxygenated. Here, gas exchange takes place, kicking the waste, carbon dioxide out, and keeping the oxygen in. Now the freshly oxygenated blood leaves, travels at low pressure through the pulmonary vein to the left atrium. After making their journey to the lungs, the waka need to come back to the central tribe in order to get more force to be pushed to what tribes they need to go to. This is where we deal with the section of the central tribe that deals with moving the waka with oxygen or sustenance to the other tribes. This is the left side and the structure is similar in this section of the tribe. The left atrium begins to fill with oxygenated blood and starts to flow into the left ventricle through the inlet valve. As the volume decreases in the atrium, it contracts to push the remaining blood to the ventricle. The waka at this point are flowing to the ventricle lake from the atrium at a low pressure. The left ventricle fills and the increase in blood volume forces the inlet valve shut, preventing backflow into the atrium. Pressure increases as the ventricle contracts, forcing the outlet valve to open and release the blood into the aorta. Because this blood needs to be delivered to places as far as your toes, the left ventricle has more muscle to allow for long distance blood flow. To move the waka, the outlet gate then opens, letting the oxygenated waka flow out and get pumped from the left ventricle through the aorta, the left outlet hour. This leads to the aortic artery for distribution around the body. Once your toes slash Stewart Island has their oxygen, deoxygenated blood comes back to the right side of the heart to repeat the process. The water and waka flow to and from the tribes using blood vessels, mainly veins and arteries. They're the same, right? Because they both carry blood. I mean, water and waka? Not quite. Arteries carry blood away from the heart at high pressure so they have more muscle in their walls to deal with that high pressure. Veins carry blood to the heart at a low pressure, so they have less muscle to deal with the lower pressure. Ah, I see. So blood travels to and from the heart, and arteries and veins have different structures because of the different blood pressure. But wait, if both regions of the heart are carrying waka, why do some waka act under higher pressure than others? Blood going away from the heart is pumped with more pressure due to the heart being the driving force. Blood that is coming back to the heart will have less pressure as it is flowing back to get more force. There are also three other factors that determines whether high or low pressure is experienced. These are viscosity, lumen size and distance. One of the factors is viscosity, which is the thickness or stickiness of blood. High viscosity blood is thicker, so it slows down blood flow, making the heart pump harder to move it around the body at the same rate. This increases blood pressure. So, with our analogy, this would be if the water carrying the waka was full of oil. The water would become thick and sluggish, so everything would move slower. This would need an increase in force to get the water and the waka to the tribes when it is needed. So the heart, or the central tribe, would have to work much harder to push it at the same rate as the other blood, or water and waka. Also, the size of the lumen in arteries and veins matters. Arteries and veins can be seen as different sized awa with different sized banks. If the lumen is smaller, the blood must work harder to flow through it at the same rate, so blood pressure must increase. The increase in blood pressure means the walls of the arteries have to be thicker to handle the pressure, whereas the walls of the veins are thinner because less pressure is required. This is similar to the size of an hour. If the distance across the hour is very small, less water and waka can go through at a time. This will mean they will have to be pushed through faster to all get to the right tribe when they are needed. This increase in force is the increase in blood pressure. Lastly, pressure varies in the distance that blood needs to travel. For example, blood flow to the lungs requires less pressure compared to other areas of your body. The greater the distance, the greater the amount of pressure needed to ensure blood reaches its destination. If we think back to the waka, all the tribes need to get sustenance, regardless of the distance. If the tribe is further away, more effort will be used by the central tribe to get the water and the waka there. If the central tribe is in Auckland, for example, 
Best effort is required to get the waka to the Lan tribe in Whangarei, compared to the waka that needs to get to the lake in Kaikoura. Okay, so different distances mean different amounts of pressure to move the water and the waka, oh, I mean blood, and different thicknesses of the blood and lumen alter how much pressure is applied? Now that I know how the heart works, how do I know that my heart is functioning well? Since I can't see viscosity, or how far away my heart pumps blood, or even the lumen of my veins. We can figure out how well our hearts are working by measuring cardiac output. Our hearts use viscosity, lumen size, and distance to figure out how much blood to pump, and when, and where. Together, these three factors affect your cardiac output. This is the volume of blood pumped per minute and can be found by multiplying the volume of blood pumped per heartbeat by the number of heartbeats per minute. This is how you can tell your cardiac output. Overall, this is the relationship between you, your blood pressure and your cardiovascular system.